friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. We're going to be resuming our in-depth Angular and Aqueduct series, building a photo gallery web application. In this video, we're going to be looking at the gallery edit screen, in particular, loading in data that we've saved to the database already um, in our gallery edit form. So I'm not going to waste your time any further. Let's get into it. Returning to our home page, will actually be useful to define the edit view for our gallery. I will return here and the pages will create a new file, we'll call it gallery edit component dot dot and as always we need to import Angular in its routing package and then we will import our root paths followed by our gallery form component. We will also need our gallery model and our gallery service and then let's define our component. This will take in a template, we will define a row followed by a column, followed by a heading, and then after that we'll render our gallery form. And then let's define the class, so gallery edit component. And before we go further, let's add in our directives. This will be our gallery form component, because we're using that here. And then we'll inject our service as usual. And then we need to do the same thing we did with our gallery view component. So we'll implement the onActivate lifecycle method. And then on activate, we are going to make a call to our backend. So before we carry on, let's inject our service. So I'll do and then in here we'll retrieve our gallery ID by invoking the get ID function, which remember is from our root paths, and then we'll pass in our current parameters that will give us the ID. And then we want to await our call to gallery service dot get gallery and then we'll pass in that gallery ID and the results that come back we need to assign that to our gallery variable. Okay, so the next thing we need to do with this gallery is we need to pass that into our gallery form. So right now the gallery is not defined so I can do add a template and then we do an ng if if our gallery is not equal to null that means it's been loaded then we'll render our gallery form and just make sure to import core directives else that will throw so let's see that okay that succeeded we'll come to our route paths we'll define gallery edit and then our path our path is similar to this one we will just include slash edit so we can do that and then slash edit but it's much easier to just do or much efficient to do gallery view.path so it will return that and then we'll just add edit to it so that should do as well and then I'll come to our routes and then we just need one of these for our gallery edit view let's define that here as well and then we need to import gallery edit and put that here then we want gallery edit okay so we've got a root definition for our gallery edit and then we're exporting it so that means that in our in our gallery list over here we can define a router link and then we actually need a similar function to this one for our gallery edit so i'll come to our gallery list component and uh, in fact we can copy this and then paste it and then i'll call it gallery edit and then we want our gallery edit key gallery edit route path and what else do i want to do in fact i will get rid of this and then i'll use the id param constant we defined earlier on in our route paths so this bit i'll just reuse that here and this is one of the cultures with dots so if you want to define a computed key of a map you pass it in as such i know for those from a javascript background you do something like that but in dot we just pass in the variable as such and that will compute it so i'll do the same here then i'll save that okay let's check this out actually not yet last thing I'll do is I'll copy this and I'll bring that here in our template and then we want to pass the items ID 
and then let's come to the browser okay so if i hover on edit and look at the bottom left it should show the edit url and we see that so i click on that and then that brings us here it's gone ahead and retrieved the gallery from the back end so next we need to pass in the gallery details we've retrieved from our database into this form so this brings us to our gallery form directive and let me close all of these files so i'll come to our gallery form directive here and then fortunately we've got our gallery model here already so uh, i'll decorate gallery with the input annotation and what that means for us is that we are able to for our edit we are able to pass it in here so what will happen is when this page is activated we make an api call to retrieve our gallery we assign it to gallery and then in our template we pass it in here to our gallery form directive and then that gets captured here essentially and then it's made available in the template so one more thing we need to correct is this bit because over here we are assuming gallery is not defined but what we can do is we can use the double question mark which is a null operator so we're saying that we create a new gallery object only if gallery is not defined if gallery is already defined that means you know this gallery form is now editing a gallery that's already been loaded in so i'll save all files and then uh, let's test this out so if i reload okay there we go we got some data coming in so of course we need to fix some issues it's returning the raw timestamp from our postgres database which we don't want and the label is overlaid the contents of description so i'll come to our template and the description is actually an easy fix we did something similar here already so i can copy that and then for our label description we'll paste that here so if our description is defined then move the label out the way let's check that out okay so that's done so the way we'll deal with this date is to is to define a utility function to help with that so in libsource i'll create a new folder called utils and then i'll just define a utils file in fact i'm not going to put it into a utils folder I'll probably just have it out here and i'll delete details we'll define a method and then this will take a date string and then in here we'll say if our date string if it's null or if it's empty then we just return null and then we are going to pass that date by doing datetime.pass and then we'll pass in our date string we'll take in the year and then we'll take in the month and then we'll take in the day and then from that we'll just return a formatted string with the year the month and the day and then we'll import our util function as such and then for our published date we want to format published date then we'll pass in our published date from the database okay let's reload something seems to be broken here invalid date format okay so the months and the days needs to be two digits so we'll come back here we'll have some extra checks so if our month is defined and if our month is less than 10 we want to do date.month then we need to interpolate this as a string so like that and then we want to call the pad left method and that takes in a width of two and then the string to pad it with so two and we'll pad it with the string zero or else we'll pass whatever the month is okay and then so we need to correct this we'll say if date is not equal to null 
and then the date month is less than 10 then we do that so essentially we need to do the same with the day so day pad left to and then we'll return wherever the day is so i'll save that and then let's come back here and then refresh and there we go and it's added a zero there as well okay so let's come back to our home page let's go to the edit for our second gallery then it's added the zeros for these digits so the last thing i want to do here is to look at the text on this button because it still says create gallery but we're not creating a new gallery we're editing a pre-existing gallery and we should also have the button here for making our deletion because we're using the same form for the creation and the edit flows for our galleries we can come over here in our gallery form directive and we can add some properties so i'll create a new property for this form component and i'll just call that submit button text in the gallery form template in our submit area i'll pass that here so I'll submit btn text as such let's save both files so for our gallery edit component we can define that submit button text and in here we'll save save changes so let's format this a bit so that should do and let's come to our browser and check I reload it says save changes and then if I come to add new gallery we need to set that for this one so I'll come to our gallery new components and then let's define our submit button text we'll call that create gallery I'll reload and then it says create gallery so if it, for adding a new gallery it says create gallery for editing a pre-existing one it says save changes and let's add the delete button so what I'll do is I'll come to our gallery form component and then I'll define another property and this will be a boolean and this boolean will be called is edit mode so that means that in our template we'll have a template section we'll have an ngf section and then we'll check if it's edit mode if we are running in edit mode then we want to render our delete button so next to see this we'll come to our gallery edit component and then over here we'll say it's edit mode set that to true then we need to put in an array notation to treat this as an expression rather than a raw string so let's reload and in our edit screen we have our delete gallery button but then if we come to add new gallery we don't see the delete button and this ends the video thanks for watching if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any updates if you've got any questions do let me know down below and consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron i really do appreciate it and it allows me to put more time in producing this content thank you